Across the UK, on DAB Digital Radio, on the free Times Radio app, and via your smart speaker, this is Times Radio. Well, now, the R number is below one. The virus is receding and the vaccines are rolling out very rapidly. But as the school bells ring next week for the start of half term, children won't be running joyously from the school gates. More likely, they'll be flooding from the kitchen table to the sofa. A term time of staring at a screen and being stuck in the house, broken up with a nice week of staring at screens and being stuck in the house. So when will it all end? Conservative MPs are worried. They've said they want a March the 8th reopening signed in blood. But how are children their parents and their teachers coping. Well, on the line now is Adam, a parent from North London. Good afternoon. Hi, good afternoon. And I think your daughter, Thea, is also on the line, currently in Year 11. Uh, yeah, hi. Uh... Hi, Thea. And Simon Kidwell, head teacher of a primary school in Cheshire. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. <clears throat> Excuse me, let me just start with you, Adam. Last day of homeschooling, are you celebrating tonight? Uh, well, Thea and her brother are pretty self-sufficient, really. So it's not it's it's not a massive challenge for our family, but we do we do have to pop our heads around the doors to make sure that they've, they've got online to register. They're in the right lessons. They're not staring at the phones or staring out the window. But on the whole, we you know we, we I think we've got off relatively lightly. Thea, is that how you see it? Uh, yeah, I think I think that's quite accurate. <laughs> You've been great for your parents, but how's it been for you, though, staring at those screens? I mean, obviously, it's very different to normal school. In school, you've got much more support uh, from teachers and, like, even your classmates. Like, you're much, it's, much, it's much more of a sociable uh, um, kind of environment when you're in school. Mm. Uh, at home, it's very kind of cold and you don't really have that interaction. It also becomes quite boring and it's you get quite easily distracted. You've got... They're kind of replacing work with learning. You've got quite a lot of um, intense learning because there's no real interruption of um, work. Mm. And I remember we spoke to you before, didn't we, when we were talking about um, teenagers' mental health, and it has been really tough, hasn't it? Because your GCSEs are, are up in the air, aren't they? Uh, yeah, that has been quite um, stressful for a number of... for me and, like, a number of people in my school. It's just the constant uncertainty of whether, like, we're going to be doing exams. If if we're not doing exams, what are we going to do? Mm. And whether, like, we need to be working really hard or we can kind of take a bit of a break. Well, let me bring in Simon Kidwell here, head teacher of primary school in Cheshire. Simon, that uncertainty is a killer for, for head teachers as well, isn't it? How confident are you of opening on March the 8th? Well, we need to remember why we closed in the first place and we closed because of the transmission of the virus in the community. Our school opened on January the 4th and we were really excited to be back with a full complement of 400 plus students. And then we had to close or limit our numbers the following day. So we really are hoping that the numbers that we're hearing about today in terms of the uh, R rate, that's going to continue to go down over the next three weeks and we can fully reopen on the 8th of March. You sound a bit sceptical that that's going to be the case. Well, I'm, pl I'm planning to fully reopen. I really want to reopen. The teachers in our school want to fully reopen. However, what we don't want to do is open and then find we've got to then close again for a, for a third school lockdown. That would be so dispiriting. So mm. um, I really want to make sure that the scientific evidence is there um, and the politicians follow that rather than this kind of talk of signing things in blood. But, but we really want to be back on the 8th. I mean, we really do because there's no better place for children than in school. Adam, are you sort of hoping against hope that schools reopen on March the 8th or do you, looking at the figures, think, well, that's looking pretty unlikely? Well, I'd, I'd hope they're open. But, of course, we just want to make sure they're open and they're safe to open. And therefore, children, staff, the wider public, the NHS, etc., everybody is safe and everybody can be go into school confidently as well and therefore get the best and the most out of their their school experience it's been you know it, it, it's been very it's been challenging yeah uh, and it's been tough tough for the kids uh tough for those vulnerable kids as well so if schools if it's safe to open for our community and our country then let's get them open but absolutely as uh, as the previous caller said you know let's not write and let's not let's not write it in blood let's just make sure step by step it's safe to open and then the kids the kids and the staff can go back well simon how is it best to help uh, children catch up because there's been talk about extending the school day shortening the summer holiday would your teachers be happy to do that do you think 
Um, in terms of what, what the children need, I think Thea hit the nail on the head earlier when she said she's missed out an awful lot of social um, interaction with her peers and a lot of the academic learning has continued virtually and the technology has been pushed out. We've done far better at getting vulnerable pupils in during lockdown three and far better at getting digital uh, learning uh, up and running. So for me, it's about um, extending the opportunities children get to do those sports activities, those drama activities, the dance things, all those social things. Because it's been, it has been 12 months of disruption. I know we've only had two school lockdowns, but there's been pretty much a, a curtailing of a lot of those activities that children missed out on. So for me, it's about those broad things that schools are about, but, uh, rather than just a narrow academic focus. I mean, obviously, I'll, I'll come back to Thea in a minute, um, but you know, she's obviously a great self-starter, but some kids aren't, so they're going to need academic catch-up. Would your teachers be prepared to extend the school day, not just for the extracurricular clubs you're talking about, but for the actual classwork as well? Well, I'm not quite sure that um, that's, that's the best way. It's about the quality of teaching that goes on the school day rather than extending uh, the school day for an extra hour or for two weeks in the summer. I'm all for enrichment activities, more for us doing more. But for me, it's about fo- focusing on those children that need additional support. And we were doing that in the autumn term. We were looking at children who'd lost the most learning and we were targeting those in the autumn term. But adding an extra hour onto the school day, I'm not sure that's the best and the most um, value for money activity we can do. Thea, would you like to see the school day lengthened so that you can catch up on any academic work or are you just keen to, to do the sort of extracurricular stuff that you've missed out on? Uh, I think it's a bit of a mix of both. Obviously, I'm not too keen on extending um, <laughs> the school day. Honest. But, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, I'm, I, I enjoy the extracurricular activities at school and obviously I can't wait for those to open. Like, I've really missed school uh, sports especially. Um it's just this, like the the kind of team camaraderie of it has been like a real miss mm. uh, and I think for everybody across the school that kind of thing has been uh, quite missed. Adam do you think that, that this is a chance to think radically you know scrap GCSEs which you know currently as we discussed up in the air for your daughter um, you do shorter terms but more of them what about a five term year are you up for thinking radically? Well I think so but I think what what's important is to have clarity mm. really clarity quickly and I think if we can, if if the, if the government and be advised by the edu- by Simon and the other education experts as to what is the best way forward to ensure that our children get the most out of this school year and then move on and progress see- or as seamlessly as possible into their future years, uh, then I th- then I think that that will be that will be the the best route forward. But I think it's clarity. Uh, rapidly is, is really what is really what what is what, what what we want yeah. and what we want as quickly as possible simon you've been promised clarity by the government but do you also want radicalism do you want a five-term year you know more regular shorter holidays would that be good I'd love an opportunity to look at the school holiday calendar because six weeks over the summer is a long period and we know that disadvantaged children, there was a report done by Frank Field for David Cameron back in 2010 that talked about disadvantaged children suffering over six weeks. So I would like us to use this as an opportunity to uh, to look at uh, radical changes and also to look at the place of digital learning. We've done a great um, job of actually addressing the digital divide in some communities and I'd like to see that continuing. So there isn't this um, disadvantage gap because families don't have access to the internet. Does the Education Secretary, Gavin Williamson, have the vision to do this, do you think? Um, I think there's some very good people. I was really encouraged to hear about Sir Kevin Collins being appointed to support the government with catch-up. And Kevin's got an excellent track record leading uh, schools, local authorities and the education endowment fund. So hopefully they can listen to the experts and listen to teachers on the ground. You think he'll help Gavin Williamson catch up? I, I, I certainly th- know the quality of the work that he does, and uh, I, I certainly and I was very encouraged by that appointment. Thea, so, yeah, you've got half term looming. What are you going to do? Well, uh, I've got very mixed messages from different teachers. Some teachers are telling us to, you know, kind of do a bit more work. Some of us, some of them are telling us to relax a bit. So I think I'll do something <laughs> in between. <laughs> very wise, but you can't go anywhere, can you? That's the terrible thing. No, not really. Just planning on a, a few walks and um, a lot of Zoom calls. Oh, dear. Well, I mean, you know, I suppose you can go for a few walks in London. You know, any bits of London you haven't seen that you might get out and see? Uh, uh, I quite like to go on a, on a cycle up to Buckingham, round Hyde Park. That's always a good, um, a good cycle. And uh, 
just general walks around uh, my local park is always uh, not too bad. <laughs> well, you're very you're very tolerant. Um, Thea, Adam, you've obviously got an easy time with Thea there, so that's great. Um, great to hear from you all. Adam, Thea and Simon Kidwell, head teacher of primary school in Cheshire, thank you all for joining us this afternoon. Good luck with half term.